everyone. Hard to believe we're already getting into the summer months. So the critical updates this month are one, we have just finished our member satisfaction survey, but not at the time of this filming. So I will share the company results in a separate communication. We'll be publishing those results to all members uh, everywhere. Not every single comment and all that, of course, but our overall score as a company or community and by department. We're going to tell everyone exactly how we did, both our team members and of course, our members who absolutely want to know. Our next step is for every department to focus on the top one or two items, two items max, that we can solve for or improve within the next 30 days. We want to get an early win. We want to show the members we've heard their feedback, we've received their feedback, which I'll, I'll remark is overall very positive, always opportunities for, to improve, and that's why we're doing the survey. So our, our goal is that we just focus on one or two items, show them we've heard their feedback, and we are acting, we're doing something about it. We are improving resident satisfaction, making it an even greater place to live. So our goal is that each department, each community, one item, maybe two, um, that we can solve for within the next 30 days, 60 max. What is that one item for you and your community? Let's go, let's go tackle it. Let's get that early win for us and our members. The next critical update is that we have finally, I'm sure many of you are thinking that, updated our wage bands. So any changes being made already went into effect for the payroll period starting May 12th. So basically second half of May, wage band changes, updates were in effect. Uh, which we generally, there's very few positions I'll note uh, in the company across communities that didn't have some sort of an increase uh, most recently. So make sure you know if you just got a raise. I hate it, it drives me bonkers when I hear about people who weren't even aware they were given a pay increase. So don't let that be you, check your pay stub. Hopefully you already are aware, we're told, but certainly I'm logging into the Paylocity app, we've talked about that before. You know, make sure you're well informed. I'll comment we were a little behind on our intended schedule of setting wages, as many of you are likely aware. And I would just comment that labor costs are our absolute largest operating expense and it was extra critical, always is, you know, important that we took some extra time to ensure we made the appropriate updates. And so then one last critical update for today, also related to wages, but specific to our nursing teams. And that is that we have again increased our shift differentials. You know, we've been seeing that most of our openings in agency use is now very much so disproportionately concentrated or occurring during night shifts. And so we've increased the shift differentials to help combat this. Today's leadership message is a continuation of radical you can get up to speed by watching the May Wig Report on our SLC YouTube channel, which you should subscribe to, by the way, uh, where we introduce and explain what radical candor is. I'd like to focus this message on how to practice radical candor. And similar to last month, who better to communicate that message than Kim Scott, the author of Radical Candor? One of the things that I want to do in the next couple of seconds is just offer you an order of operations. How can you begin to put these ideas into practice? Start by soliciting radical candor, especially soliciting criticism. Don't dish it out until you prove that you can take it. So you want to solicit first. Now you're in a better place to start giving radical candor. And remember, radical candor is just as much about praise, even more about praise, than it is about criticism. You want to focus on the good stuff, but you don't want to ignore problems either. So that's giving radical candor. Now, in order to make sure that these conversations are good, the next thing you need to do is to gauge it. If there were an objective measure of radical candor, I could just post on a blog post somewhere what the right words are, but there aren't necessarily right words. What you need to do is understand how what you are saying lands for the other person. So radical candor gets measured not at the speaker's mouth, but at the listener's ear. So if the person is upset, if they're angry, if they're sad, that's your cue to attend to the care personally dimension of radical candor, to understand the human need behind the upset. But if the person just isn't hearing you, which actually, even though you fear the strong emotions, what usually happens is you work up your courage to say something and then the person doesn't even hear you. When they don't hear you, that's your cue to move out on the challenge directly dimension of radical candor. And last but not least, encourage it. 
All too often, one person who we know comes and starts talking to us badly about another person who's not in the room. And it's tempting to listen. It's tempting to think that you're being an empathetic colleague, an empathetic friend to listen. This is the one time when listening is not your friend. All you're doing is stirring the political pot. When that happens, the thing to do is to encourage that person to go talk to the person with whom they're having the problem, the conflict. So encourage radical candor. Thank you so much for your time. Go forth and be radically candid. So I encourage each of you to take this seriously and take a next step. Best next step, think who on your team or in your community can you go and ask for feedback? Just ask, how am I doing? If you have something specific to ask about, even better. Ask them how you are doing and what you can do better. This is most important, absolutely important, we should be doing it already, for our managers to do with the team members that they or you are responsible for serving. Whatever the feedback is, welcome it and encourage it. Uh, you know, we want radically candid feedback. You should ask for and want to receive radically candid feedback. It's how we all get better. We want it to be shared more often. So take that next step. Let's practice radical candor. This month's benefit highlight is our Elevate program. Last month, we talked about career pathways and our desire to help you grow and advance with us and in your careers. Elevate is one of the ways we do that. It is our tuition reimbursement program. So through the Elevate program, every part-time and full-time team member can receive up to $2,500 every year. So again, up to $2,500 every year towards education expenses. And just to give you a few examples of how we see this used, commonly used, is people paying for nursing school, getting a culinary degree, getting their commercial HVAC certification. If you are unsure if what you want to do qualifies, just ask your HR director. We give out close to $200,000 a year through our Elevate program, and we'd love to give out more. Help us help you and your family advance. Valerie is our hero at Evergreen Woods because of the wonderful way that she greets people at the concierge desk. She's the concierge that everybody should have at their community. Um, she's welcoming and pleasant, and whenever I mention how important customer service is um, at new hire orientation, Valerie's name always comes up. So since Valerie began working here, we've received high compliments from staff, residents, family members. Everyone who walks through the door is greeted with the most friendly presence. She makes everyone feel welcome. She makes everyone feel like a friend. And we're so lucky to have her. I love working at Evergreen Woods because I'm a people person. I love people. And I especially always want to do my part and make people feel special, even if it's just for a few moments. And the residents make me laugh all day long. <laughs> Anyone that comes in and calls make me laugh. I just love working here. I sent in our hero spotlight um, because I knew one thing we could all agree on was that everyone makes mistakes and birthdays are very special. <laughs> and by that I mean, um, I inadvertently left one of our members' birthdays off our calendar and that was my mistake. And we wanted to make sure that the gentleman's birthday was celebrated and Mary decided that she was going to take care of that and I think her story is um, very sweet and made the member feel very special. Do you want to tell them what happened? I would love to. Um, so I have always been a birthday person. I love birthdays. Um, and I had a table of some people that I, you know, I've been familiar with because you have you know, different people and you start to kind of get to know them a little bit. And, um, and one of the ladies, you know, I was bringing them dessert and she told me, she was like, well, you know, it's his birthday today, so do we get free cake? And I was like, sure. I said, no, no, I'm just kidding, go fire me. Um, I, uh, and I was like, oh my goodness, like you should have, should have told me earlier. And so I just kind of without thinking, I guess I just picked up a glass and, and a fork and I was like, well guys, you know, let's let's sing happy birthday to um, the resident. And so, and we did. And I thought it was so sweet how uh, everybody knew his name. You know, I didn't, I don't even think I said it, but they all knew it was his birthday. And um, it was a super sweet moment to see them all 
you know, having fun like that. So we all had fun. It was fun. <laughs> I will also mention that Mary is part of a partnership that we have with Waccamaw High School and we have several um, high school kids working here as servers um, and they're amazing. We love having them here, they're conscientious, they're, the members adore them and it's working out for both of us I think. Yes. Well Meg and David started out with us in wellness and in social. She really took to the idea that everybody's in sales. She created an exercise program for someone in independent and in assisted living, and both those prospects turned into members. Well done in living out our guiding principles of we all have a responsibility to be full. Way to go, Megan. Megan has joined our care services team as the activities director, and we are thrilled. Uh, she brings a lot of great ideas and passion, and we are so excited to see what she has in store for activities in the Care Services Department. She is a blessing to Summit Hills. She always has a smile. She makes everyone's life more enjoyable, and she's always willing to do whatever is needed. We are blessed to have Megan part of the team. Um, one of the reasons I love being at Summit Hills is because I love my work family. And then my other reason is because I love my residents. I get to learn from them and they make me smile every day. Awesome work heroes. And thank you to everyone for all you do each day to enrich the lives of our members and your fellow team members. Let's use our survey results to better deliver the weather life.